I am a pastor of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, I was saved when I was very young. Uh, I, I followed Jesus all of my life, and I was called to preach by Jesus Christ. He personally came to me, and he was more real to me then and today right now than the people that are sitting around me listening to me right now. He was so real to me, and he called me to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I have done that, and I love to see people come to Christ. We call that in the Baptist church getting saved. That's what the Apostle Paul said, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So that's why we call it being saved. And in all, my, in all my times, I met a man, a man by the name of Floyd Williams, and he became a dear, dear friend of mine, and he was a deacon of mine, and he was a friend of mine, and we would take a lot of times, we'd eat, eat, eat together, we'd go out together, we'd have, have good times, his family and my family. And I loved his kids, I loved him, I loved his wife, I loved everything about him. And they loved me also. They loved me, loved me, loved me. Well, Floyd, uh, he had an interesting story. He would go out with me on what we call visitation. And I would introduce him, and I would say, say this, this kind of thing. Floyd, you see, he was in the U.S. Army during World War II. And he got over there right at the end of World War II. He, he got there at the, right kind of at the end of 44. And uh, when the 45 came and the war was over, or at the end of the war there, he, uh, he didn't have enough points to go home, so he had to stay as an occupying force for a while. And they put him up in Linz, Austria. I've been to Linz. They put him up into Linz, Austria, and he was, uh, he was a commandant of a prisoner of war camp there where they had German prisoners of war. And he said every day they would wake up and they'd go out and take muster, and they would have uh, more prisoners the next day than they had the night before. You see, what was happening, the, the Soviets were coming from the other direction, and the German army people, they did not want to be taken prisoner by the Soviets. They did not want to be killed by the Soviets, and they knew that the Americans would give them meals, would give them a place to sleep, would give them warmth, would, would, would take good care of them, and they wouldn't kill them. And so they, they, uh, they would literally, every night, they would break in to the uh, uh, camp and uh, they'd end up being there the next day. There were people breaking in the prisoner of war camp every night in order to get the safety and the security of the United States Army against the Soviets. And so he would tell that and he would laugh and it would have such a good time. But I, I'm telling you that to remember that one day, one day Floyd uh, called and said he needed to come and talk to me. And so he came and talked to me and we say, we, uh, he said, I just found the most wonderful verse in the Bible last night. He said, I've been a, at that time, Floyd was about 66, and he'd been, he'd been a Christian since he was a teenager. So he, he, here's this man who was a successful businessman, and he came, and he was, he was just so happy. He said, I found a verse, and I'm so excited about that verse, and I want to I just share that with you. It's Isaiah 41, 2, 10, and it says, Fear not, for I am with you. God says, don't be afraid anymore, Floyd. I'm with you. I'm with you. Be not dismayed. Don't, don't just feel ashamed. Don't, don't give up hope, for I am your God. I, I have adopted you into the family. You're mine. I've approached you. I have chosen you. I will strengthen you. I will give you strength for the, for the time. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And he told me, he said, you know what? Now I know how those German soldiers felt in World War II when they came to my prisoner of war camp. They literally broke in in order to be a prisoner of the Americans. And he said, right now I have broken in to the kingdom of God in order to be a prisoner of Jesus Christ because I want Jesus to take care of me. I want Jesus to uh, fulfill me. I want Jesus to feed me. I want Jesus to love me. I want the fellowship of Jesus. I want Jesus to comfort me. And I want Jesus to tuck me in at night when I go to bed because I've never had anybody do that before. And so we went on with that for, for a while. And then there came a time when Floyd got a, just a terrible disease. He got cancer and he, he didn't get better. He didn't get better. He didn't get better. They did surgeries. They amputated one of his legs and he still didn't get better and he didn't get better. And then there came a time when they called in hospice. And so I went over to see Floyd. I was one of the last people. 
And I walked in, and his wife, Marjorie, was sitting there, and she said, I have him in here in the room, and, and oh, it was so, so clean. He had clean sheets. He had, he had, uh, every, he had clean pajamas, and he was set, taking such good. She had shaved him, and he was unconscious. And she said, now, he, he won't be able to talk to you. And so I said, Floyd, this is your pastor. You know what she did? He w- woke up for the first time in about three days. He woke up wide-eyed, and he said, yes, pastor. He heard my voice. I said, Floyd, are you all right? He said, I'm waiting for the call. I'm waiting for the call. He was waiting to hear Jesus say, Floyd, you come home. It's all over. And and I can just imagine him. He would have broken the doors down in order to get into heaven. Because once you see Jesus, once you see heaven, you become homesick and you find that this is not your home. So he loved that. Fear not, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be dismayed, for I'm your God. I'm going to strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now listen, folks, I know some of you are discouraged. You're discouraged about your church. You're discouraged about your denomination. I am too. I am too. But let me tell you what. My denomination, my church did not save me. Jesus saved me. And Jesus brought me into the Beloved. And so I know Jesus. I love Jesus. Now, am I perfect? No, I'm not perfect. Far from it. I wouldn't take the best five seconds of my life and try to get into heaven. But Jesus loved me. And by his grace, he saved me. And he brought me into the beloved. And now I can call you brother. I can call you sister. I can call you friend. Because Jesus is my best friend. Thank you so much. God bless you.